Hi everybody, it's Nicolas Dorier and uh, today I will present you a topic that is a bit more advanced than my last video about Taproot, which is how to use music for aggregating signature between different signers. So I will I will dive into a bit into the detail. But first, a small recap about what my last video that I advise you to see prior to this video is in Taproot there is two ways of spending one Taproot output. One way is called spend via the key path. So if you use this in the chain, it's very tight. There is only a single signature and a single pop key and nothing else. So it's the most optimal way of spending something on Taproot. But you can fall back on another way uh, that is called the spend via script path. And in this case, instead of only a signature appearing on the blockchain, you will have a script with the Merkle Merk branch that represents a chain of hash to prove that this script is committed to by the output pub key and the argument to pass this script, so typically other signatures. So first, uh, if you remain, re remember the last video, I said that uh, the output key is a sort of combination of the Merkle roots of uh, the scripts to which you can spend, so the tab script we call this, and also an internal key. And I said that this internal key can be an aggregated key of different users. So in pink, for example, it's Alice, in blue it's Bob, in uh, yellow it's Carol, and it's kind of an aggregated key, nobody know uh, what is the private key of this in the, this key, but they can uh, together create the signatures. And this is with the music protocol that I will present you today. And the, but the downside of music is that it only support uh, end by end signatures, so three by three or four by four or five by five, for example. And if you want a three short, what we call three short signature, where you want to signal out of three. In this case, you need to fall back to uh, the uh, tab scripts. And an easy way to, to, to do this kind of thing is having one script that is Alice object sig hag, Bob object sig hag, and Carol object sig hag, three equal. So this type of script is uh, the way to have a multi-signature multi script inside Taproot. You can see it's not object multi-sig, like uh, in normal Bitcoin uh, in previous Bitcoin script, because it's for tap, tap roots, uh, this opcode has been deactivated. But you can do that on a different way. You can you can also say that uh, a two by three signature means that either Alice on, and Bob sign, or Alice and Carol, or Bob and Carol sign. And the advantage of decomposing one script in several subscripts like this is that if you ever need to fall back on script path, uh, you will not leak any anything else that is needed. So for example, if Alice and Bob sign, the only tab script that will be revealed is Alice and Bob and nothing about Alice and Carol or Bob and Carol, which means that an observer on the blockchain cannot really know uh, that this spending is uh, anything else than a two by two uh, signature. So imagine that now you want uh, to do music. So instead of using the script path, if they want to sign, then the way of doing it is a bit different in music. So first they need to uh, create what we call a nonce. So uh, in, in this slide, you can see that I put a small N uh, next to the logo, it means it's a nonce. So it has nothing to do with the private key of Bob or the private key of Alice. Uh, it's a different type of, it's also a private key, but a different type, it's a kind of one, uh, one time use private key that will be only used for the signing session. We call that a nonce. And it's very important that this nonce is not reused twice because else there is funny attack that can uh, be used to retrieve the private key of those participants. So the first step is that each of them like generate what we call secret nonces. Then from the secret nonces, they can derive the public nonces. And from this, so the, those nonces, they can share between them and combine all of them together into a combined nonce. 
once they have a combined nouns, they can finally, each of those different participants, Alice, Bob, and Carol, they can generate a partial signature. So they need the secret nouns, they need the combined nouns, and they need the private key with which they are signing to, to do this. And once everybody is signed, then you can just add those signatures together and you will have a valid signature that you can put on the blockchain. So if we look at the kind of interaction that is needed for signing, rune, uh, signing runes under music, it looks like the following. So first, Alice, Bob, and Carol, they all send their public nouns to the coordinator. And then when Alice, Bob, and Carol want to sign, they get these combined nouns and produce their signature and send that to the coordinator. Of course, you can do that without a coordinator with every one of them like sending to each other the public key. But in this example, I will uh, use a coordinator. And uh, that's one way of doing so. It has very bad implication, which is th this scheme works very well if Alice, Bob and Carol are always connected. You know, it's a simple signing rune if they are always connected and uh, it's a non-interactive in interaction, then it's perfectly fine. But imagine that Alice, Bob, and Carol need to va manually validate a spending uh, by, with their phone. When Alice will first connect, she cannot just tap a button and say, okay, I agree, I agree to sign because she cannot sign yet because she don't have the other nouns. So first she needs to share the nouns. Then later when everybody shares the nouns, they can, she can reconnect and create the signature. So for this, uh, case. That's why we say that Music 2 is a two-room signing process. And uh, uh, from the user experience perspective, it's pretty bad because it means that all of them cannot, you know, connect whenever they want to sign. They need to first share their nouns and once everybody shared, then they can sign. It's uh, pretty bad. So an alternative that they can do is that, uh, an improvement they can do is that under this, in, instead of doing the signing round, what they can do is as well, when they are sending their signature, they can send the uh, private nouns, uh, the, the public nouns for the next signing session. So imagine, for example, the same uh, round, si uh, signing round than before, but this time they all send the nouns at the, uh, the nouns of the next si uh, signing session with their signature. So it's the same idea, except that the next signing round, because every the coordinator already has the public nouns that everybody will use, then we can have a model that is more uh, in check with what we are used to, which is Alice can uh, connect only one time and just ask the coordinator for this combined nouns and like sign directly. So this will be more how we are used to it. But let's also say that, imagine that Carol, for example, there, there is Alice and Bob that approve the payment first and Carol never connects. If we had only music, uh, we will have a sort of problem where the funds are locked because Carol might be don't reply and it's a two by three multisig, so they should be able to spend it. So what? Alice and Bob can do is that on top of sending the nouns for the next session and the signature and the music partial signature, what they can also do is sending the signature for uh, the tab script that might be used for spending in case Carol don't appear. So it's exactly the same round, except that this time there is three signatures. So one of those signatures is the keypath key path partial signature. And for example, for Alice, because there is three different tab scripts, she will provide uh, two signatures because maybe the next person will be Bob that connect and approve the payment. So she will say, okay, Alice and Bob. And in case Bob become unresponsive, Alice will also uh, send a signature for Alice plus Carol. So now they, they can all send the signature. And imagine if two of them connect, but not the third one, they can always fall back uh, with one of those tab scripts and uh, be able to successfully complete, complete the transaction. That's all what I wanted to tell you today. 
And I hope now you understand how MuSig is a bit different from the other kind of multisig protocol that we were using prior to it, because it's a two round protocol. But luckily this, the first round of this round can be pre-computed. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you for the next video.